All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. I am sitting here with Tristan Matthews. Welcome to the show, Tristan. Very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. It's really great to have you. Okay, so I'm sitting here. I'm breaking coronavirus protocol <laughs> for the first time, but there's nobody I'd rather break coronavirus protocol with than Tristan. Tristan, you hold us like a, a well, you literally hold a record uh, in regards to Spider Man. Um, but like, I mean, I'll describe the scene uh, of the crime in a minute, but can you spell out specifically what is it you're famous for in the realm of Spider-Man? <laughs> I guess if you consider it famous, uh, I currently have the Guinness World Record for the largest collection of Spider-Man memorabilia. Um, the official count was 3,079 pieces. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people out there are thinking, I have more than that, and you, you may. Um, it's a little bit of work to get through the process and whatnot. Um, and sort of the big thing I do want to stress is that I don't feel like I'm a bigger Spider-Man fan than anybody else. I feel like we're all, if you love Spider-Man, I think that's the special thing about the character. It's kind of like the Beatles. Like you can listen to one song by the Beatles and be just as big of a fan, in my opinion, as somebody who's been loving them for their whole life. Because it's all about the love of the character and sort of what you know that means to you. Um, I just have been fortunate to have a patient wife who doesn't mind uh, a bit of hoarding tendencies and... I've been reading Spider-Man since I was 11, and I'm 36 now, so just sort of uh, war by attrition, I guess. <laughs> I, I'm very familiar with that. Um, you know, it's it's funny you say that number. You know, that uh, I want to get into the details of like how that's calculated and what that whole process is like in in a moment. Um, you know, I, I guess yeah, I, I, it's a, it's a good point that you take. It's like everybody's fandom is expressed in in different ways. Like I don't really buy a lot of toys. Although at the same time, I'm very jealous of, of your toys. Um, so, you know, I just want to describe the scene here for those who aren't watching on video or, or are just listening to the podcast, you know, Tristan, your house is like half devoted to Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, well, you know, my wife, when we moved into the house, we have a guest room, and I sort of had thought that the guest room would become where I would hide all my comic book stuff to kind of keep it out of the, the space, but um, Rosa is very supportive of my collection and sort of my habit, I guess, um, and her whole perspective on it was, if you're the Guinness World Record holder, you're going to have people come over and, like, wonder about it, so why not just kind of have it out for people to kind of come in and, and take a look at, and it's sort of a talking piece. Um, this is not the entire collection. Um, it's a good amount of it, because most of my collection is individual issues, um, are individual issues. But, uh, you know, stuff like a McDonald's Happy Meal toy, to your point about toys, like I, I have them from when I was a kid, or uh, much like you, I have a, any friend I have who knows that I like Spider-Man will be like, hey, I went to McDonald's, I have this toy, do you want it? It's like, sure, I'll take it, but... You know, so that's all in the garage, sort of in storage. I was going to ask about that because I had to kind of put the kibosh in my own personal life on yeah. Spider-Man related memorabilia because every Christmas came down to, because you can buy Spider-Man anything. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, there's Stan Lee cologne right. and there's Spider-Man, whatever. I, don't I have Spider-Man cologne. I put it on for you today. Uh, look I'm at this. I'm also wearing my Spider-Man underwear and Spider-Man socks. So uh, there we go. <laughs> I didn't need to know it, but now I do. <laughs> and, I'll, do. And, and, so I'll, do and I'll take extra care of the webbiness of your cologne. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, it's, I'm a little, I'm a little shocked. Um, but uh, yeah, so like for me, I had to put a stop to that because it's like I don't need five more Spider-Man coffee makers right. in my life. Uh, you know, as this person, do you do people just deposit Spider-Man items upon you? And, and they is do. there any kind of weeding process? Or you're like, it's all good at this point. Now that I have the record, it's all good. Yeah. If I don't already own it, I like to have it. Uh, if I do already own it, if I have doubles, I try to make a point of giving out uh, my doubles as a gift, as as um, you notice today, I sort of have like my small stack here. Um, what happened, I think in high school, I was in high school when the first Sam Raimi movie came out um, and then into college. And so at that point, there were so many serials out, I, I got a million gifts. And then I had so much stuff that I would say about five years ago when I uh, went through my Buddhism phase, I sort of gave away a lot of that. I had mm. a yard sale before I went to Thailand for a month, you know, and was like, I don't need any material belongings other than my actual comics. So I did actually purge a lot of my collection back then, about five years ago, anything non-issue um, related. Um, and then this has sort of been either the statues that I didn't want to give up or the original art that has significance to me. Um, but otherwise, um, I got rid of a lot of like the Happy Meal toys and whatnot. So before we get into like the Guinness book of it all, I guess I'm curious, like personally, 
your kind of connection with the character? I mean, you've been collecting for, it sounds like, 20-some years. Yeah, uh, 95 was my first Spider-Man comic, so, yeah. Great. So, uh, you know, I guess I'm curious about the the situation. You know, it doesn't need to be an epic story, but, like, what, what, what connected you so much that you're like, I'm sure at the time you weren't like, this is it. Right. I'm devoting my life to collecting right. Spider-Man things. I, I feel like anybody who says that, it's a it's a very retroactive history. For you know, sure, yeah. On their collection. Um, I started off reading comics in 92. My first comic was uh, Punisher Warzone number 5 uh, by the unfortunate Chuck Dixon and uh, my favorite artist, John Romita Jr. Um, and at that time, I really liked more anti-heroes. I kind of liked the long hair, the beard. I liked the the gritty guys. I mean, it was the early 90s, you know. Um, and then there was a cover of Web of Spider-Man 126 where Peter Parker is in shackles and he's got sort of a five o'clock shadow and a mullet. And it was drawn by John Romita Jr. And something about that issue just spoke to me. And I really liked uh, Ben Riley. I really liked sort of the Scarlet Spider of it all. So I started reading Spider-Man because of Ben Riley, which I think, you know, unless you were specifically in that period is uh, a crime among Spider-Man fans. But um, I just sort of stayed along with the character. And eventually, it, it's pretty interesting because I think as a kid, there was this weird, I don't know what it was, a uh, sort of a drawn to the darkness in characters, like, again, Morbius, Ghost Rider, all of them. And there was something about falling in love with Spider-Man. Um, I, I, I distinctly remember having an aversion to the Fantastic Four, um, any sort of establishment character that kind of seemed like like a too goody two shoes and then there was something about spider-man and the fact that and again I'm, I'm sort of there's a bit of reverse engineering in terms of my my history here but i wonder at times if what was drawing me to the character was the like he didn't need to be gritty to have that grounded feeling you know that it still it still resonated for me as a kid um even as a kid i, I sort of could relate to some of the issues that peter parker had um and i think sort of over the course of finding out that the best parts of Ben Riley were Peter Parker. Um, I just tended more toward the character at that point. So like for me, I started collecting my full run. Uh, you know, I've been collecting my entire life here and there. And, you know, my mother got rid of my comics at one oh, point no. in my life, that story <laughs> that everybody has. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, eventually it was like, I'm going to get all of the JMS issues. Right. And it just grew from there. Was there a moment where you, clicked into like I'm now collecting this as a thing yes I mean I think you know I have you been listening to Rob Liefeld's new podcast Rob Servations no I'm aware of it though. it's pretty good okay um, it's interesting to see sort of from his perspective because it's a very unique perspective yeah um, I'm aware of that yeah <laughs> he considers it he doesn't consider himself a collector he considers himself a consumer and I think for years that's sort of how I viewed myself that's why a lot of my issues aren't in you know, I don't, I don't have many 9.0s, you know, kind of thing. Um, so for me, it was similar to you. I sort of started by being like, well, you know, I started reading around issue 400. So maybe I'll collect from 300 up, you know, and I'll just sort of see what I can find. Um, and then, you know, there was an element of, well, Amazing's the only real one I need. So who cares about Web of Spectacular and, and the tangential titles? And then it just became, I, I started working at a comic book store. So I got a pretty good discount. Yeah. And, you know, I sort of got first, you know, chance at any comics that came in. Sure. So I think at that point, I just started buying some more back issues. And then it was like, well, now I have from 300. Why not try for 250 and then 200? So it was very much like in 50 issue increments from 300 on. Sure. Um, and I, there was, I never thought at all that I would have every issue of every ongoing title. You know, like that was out of my reach. But... Thankfully, I stayed single until I was in my 30s and, <laughs> and you know, and then uh, married in and the wife knew what she was into. When, that does when we make got it together. easier for yeah. sure um, as someone who did similar, uh, nearly similar. Um, but then, you know, your collection, I'm looking at it right now. I mean, again, describing your place, you've got your comics and long boxes and this nice kind of shelf. You've got these great display cases of, of figurines um, from new and old You've got some great kind of volumes of, of things, uh, you know, some, in, you know, original art, whether it be commissions or pages from the comics, an arcade cabinet, spinner rack, you know, but a lot of these toys that are here are like you would have no cultural nostalgia for, right? right. Like they're, they predate you considerably. 
so there's a sort of kind of like a, I would imagine historian aspect to your collection. When did that click in for you? Because it's like buying issues is one thing, but then expanding into buying the rock comics and right. Mexican issues where Gwen isn't dead. Right. You know, uh, like when did that mentality kick in? Well, so I would say some of the stuff in here is, you know, I think a lot of it is actually from my time, our time. You know, a lot of the statues are, um, I would say some of it, a lot of it were gifts. I have a buddy, uh, Rich Myrick, he's a producer of The Toys That Made Us, and he's a big toy collector. And part of that, we've been buddies since high school. Um, he is always finding, he probably started my being into like the quirky vintage Spider-Man stuff, like the, my Mego Spidey reading a daily bugle down there about, yeah. that came from rich, you know, the Spider-Man above it, that awkwardly his right hand, Jared, our, our mutual acquaintance pointed out is a Hitler salute. So now I don't, you know, now that has a weird feeling for me. Thanks yeah. Jared for that. Is that the electric uh, Spider-Man? That is not. Okay. No, the, the Remington, the I think. energized. Spider-Man? No, that's yeah. one of them that I sold at a yard sale. When I was it. getting okay. rid of stuff right. and, and Rich won't let me forget that. But um, so a lot of it is sort of since I've been collecting. I mean, the Alex Ross bust I got in high school um, just because I, I just really liked it. So, I, you know, I, I started my first job was uh, rubbing my Aunt Linda's feet and back while she watched Jeopardy for five dollars for an hour. That's, that's, I, that's more information than I needed. That's, but that's what I'll, everybody says. I'll yeah, I'll take it. Um, so that's, that was my first job. And then I started mowing lawns and babysitting neighbors, kids and a raking, you know, most of my teachers growing up, I was known the kid that they could have to come pull weeds because they knew I, I had this habit. I needed to get my fix. Mm-hmm. Um, my first real job was a paper boy at 12. Um, KFC hired at 15. So I got a job at KFC as soon as I could. Um, and it literally all went into comics. Like it was that, that either gas money or comic books. I, yeah. I probably should have saved, but I didn't. Um, but you are right in that there are some of these older, like the gumball machine down here, um, and I have like a Spider-Man utility belt, all that stuff, uh, this ham radio over here, that is stuff that I saw advertised while doing my read-through. My Once I had every issue of Spider-Man, I started to read in publication order. Yeah. And as I went through, I was like, oh, this medallion's really cool. Is I kind this of where want you this pull out a My Darling Pet Monkey? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's dead. It was dead when it arrived. <laughs> um, so yeah, so so now it's sort of, it has become more of an, like a, I don't know if anthropological is the right word or archaeological, but since kind of, I, it's weird. It's once I set the record, I started buying, like even my wife said, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I brought home a Spider-Man and Fantastic Four board game that mm-hmm. I saw out in the world. Yeah. And she was like, oh, are you becoming one of those collectors now? Like she was fine when it was just the comic <laughs> books, you know, or sort of like really nice pieces. But then when it became like a radio that doesn't work anymore or whatever. OK, so I want to find out about the kind of specifics, right? Because like everybody's aware of the Guinness book and like but people might not be aware of like how Guinness the Guinness book works as an organization. Yeah. Because I think that really much ties into like your claim uh, of this credit but you'll admit right like, there are probably people that have more items than than you do i'd be disappointed if there weren't frankly. i mean they I mean, might be listening to the show right now and I, saying you know shouting <laughs> into their like you know uh, iphone or whatever there's one person in particular i can think of who i uh has made it clear on uh comment sections that they have more than me which again is fine I, it goes back to my point of i, I think any fan of spider-man is a valid fan right and i and 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 just because i happen to um have been able to hold on to the stuff as long as I have, or I've, I've had a good amount of the, the higher like price items in my collection were all gifts. So I totally get that it, it is sort of a financial burden at times. Um, so yes, there are probably people out there with way more than I have. Um, I would say that anytime I see pictures, it's just toys and what you don't see are each individual comic book really do. They don't take right. up a lot of space. Um, I mean, I will say like to, to your credit and, you know, that you deserve the credit because you've earned it is that like in talking to you before we did the show and we'll get into some of the details of the individual pieces. It's like, it's clear that each piece has a story and value behind it. And to me, that's more valuable as a collector than any kind of raw number count, which, 100%. Is, which is like, you know, uh, what, what does it mean to you? Cause right. anybody can go and spend money and, and earn that title. You know, to me, You've lived like from, I hope we can make clear in the interview, you lived a life of collecting 
and consuming. Consuming, uh, yeah. sure, yeah, consuming, right. but with with care. You right. know, it's it, it, my co-host Mark. You know, his whole blog was about him collecting every issue of Amazing right. Spider-Man. He. Mark and I, we advertise at the start of the show that we own every issue of Amazing Spider-Man. It's not to say, like, we are more credentialed than anyone else. Right. Because there are plenty of people that know more about Spider-Man than, than me. It's to say, we love this character, and this is an expression of our love for this character, is that we own, however you define, right. the complete collection of the Amazing annuals Spider-Man. Count. The annuals do count. 100%, right? Mark. Yes. I'm sorry. They're, and I own your book, so... I feel like I can say that. <laughs> um, no, so yeah, basically what happened was, uh, again, sort of working backward incrementally, I eventually just realized that I was, you know, getting more and more closer to having every issue. You know, it was sort of just a thing where at a, at a certain point, it'd be like once a year. I'd be like, okay, I can spend $400. I think that's the most I've spent on a comic book was $400 on Amazing Number 3, uh, I bought wow, it. you're making me feel real bad right now. <laughs> we can edit that out then. All right. No, uh, no, no. I spent way more. Oh, is that right? That. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the most I've spent on an issue, and it was amazing number three. I got it from Earth 2 here in Sherman Oaks. Um, and that's a that's a whole other story. I'll get to your the Guinness question. But really, they when I bought it from Earth 2, they, they let me know that Dan Slott was signing down the street. So I drove with my issue of... Uh, amazing three because it's Doc Ock and I wanted to be like, Hey, Dan Slott, I love you. And look, I got, you know, the Doc Ock issue. Um, and I just proposed to my wife. So, you know, she was with me and we were really excited. We got in, you know, there were only like five people ahead of us in line, but Dan Slott talked so much that it still took about 30 minutes just to get up to him, which is great. I love, yeah, yeah, I love yeah. hearing no, the stories. That's great. Yeah. Um, and he was like, I'm not going to sign this. I'm like, I don't want you to sign it. I just wanted to show it to you. You can sign this issue of you know, amazing 800 or something. Um, so basically what happened was I have a, a local comic shop that I go to called Secret Headquarters that knows that I was chasing amazing, so to speak. And uh, they reached out and they let me know that they had an issue of Amazing Spider-Man number one and that, you know, I'd, I'd been shopping there for 13 years. So, you know, they'd give me a friendly price if I, if I could swing it. And I couldn't. But I had called a buddy, my buddy Nate, and I sort of lamented to him that, here's an issue and it's, you know, it's a 1.0, but the price was right for, you know, it was a good deal for me if I could afford it, but I was getting married and I really didn't, couldn't justify spending it. So a group of my friends went out and they, you know, chipped in and they ended up buying me Amazing Spider-Man number one and then, you know, presenting it to me at a, at a, a local brewery and saying like, and here you go. And no reason. It wasn't a birthday. It wasn't Christmas or whatever. How do we all get these friends? I know. I mean, years of cultivation. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then my friend Dan, uh, one of my oldest friends, uh, was like, so now what are you going to do? Like, you have to have some kind of record, right? And I was like, no, I, I, there's no way I have the most Spider-Man memorabilia. So I looked up the record on Guinness and it was 2,000 pieces. And oh, there was a pre-existing record? There was. Okay. And it was 2,000. And just doing the math, if you have every ongoing Spider-Man title, that's more than 2,000 issues right off the bat. So, right, yeah. you know, if I have that and, and, and my shirt, then that's 2001, you know. Um, so I reached out to Guinness. And your cologne and your underwear that's right. and your socks, that's which right. you made clear already. Several pairs of the underwear. Yes, yep. okay. Target, uh, fairly priced, very comfortable. Um, and Guinness, they do take a while to get back to you, and it is a whole process. So that is my one thing that when people have given and you know you don't never read the comments that's my fault but um is it took hundreds of hours to prepare for it so you reach out you let them know what record you want to set and what amount you think you have and then they either accept your record or your sort of attempt they either allow it or they don't they did allow my attempt and you get one year from the point that they sort of acknowledge your attempt so about eight months later, I was finally ready because you have to have a, you know, it's a spreadsheet with every everything detailed with a picture corresponding to it. Wow. Um, and then the last piece of it is you have to do a video without any editing of you counting the entire collection. Wow. And you have to have two judges. Um, one judge has to be considered a, a professional in the field. So my local comic shop owner, Dave Pfeiffer, over at Secret Headquarters, was my professional judge. And then Rich Myrick, who's a producer of The Toys That Made Us, was my second judge because I feel like if you're not an expert about the comics, you should be an expert about toys and memorabilia. Right. Um, and so they stood next to me while I 
counted every item in my collection with a clicker and you know they would stop and be like is that a valid piece and i'd have to explain why like if it, if it looked like a double for example you can't have two of the same item like you can't have 100 copies of them so of, give, me, give me an example what what's an item that you might have like quibbled over whether it counts or not because when you say collection of spider-man it's like you know, like uh, my my friend drew Spider Man on a napkin. Right. You know, does that count? Well, if your friend's like, Tom DeFalco. Well, sure, right. <laughs> or Ron Friends, uh, rather. Sure, right. I, um, I don't know what Tom DeFalco Spider Man looks like, right, but I right. would be very curious. I would be too, yeah. yeah. It's sort of like I have a, I have a Brian K. Vaughn uh, drawing of Ampersand. That's really fun. Oh, from, that's fun. Yeah, that, that's terrible, but great. Okay. Um, yeah, so it has to be something that was that's commercially available. So even original art would count because it's technically commercially available. Got it. Um, but yeah, you can't like I, I mean my my uh, mother-in-law crocheted me a Spider-Man hat. That doesn't count, you know. Um, sort of a, I have a like a knit Spider-Man doll up there. That doesn't count. That's just fun for me to have, you know. Yeah. Um, but I did have an issue of Amazing Spider-Man that from end of end of the earth. I don't remember which issue, but it was a second printing because my comic shop got shorted and I only got right. second printing. So that was a funny instance when Dave was like, wait, you counted that issue twice. And I said, no, Dave, that's the second printing, which is what you gave me. And then I had to go out and find the first printing. <laughs> you know, like that's like the asshole fan in me. But um, so that's the kind of thing that they would sort of be judges of and be like, well, we don't know if that would count because that's not. Well, what about like, you know, so the, uh, in terms of like official or not, but like Spider-Man, or not, you know, like Spider Man is pretty flexible. I agree, right? Like, is a Spider Man team up issue a Spider Man memorabilia? So, I don't want to give away too much Got because it. I am going to be doing another attempt. Got it. Okay. Uh, but no, they did not count a lot of the Marvel team up issues, and even though you could make the argument it was a Spider Man, I, I would argue that it one hundred percent is a Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Except wasn't for a counting couple I, issues. I think like five. Yeah, right. And I wasn't counting those. Um, but the other thing that they didn't count were Spider Gwen issues. Oh, and without getting too political about it, I would, I would argue that Spider Gwen is more appropriate as a Spider Man piece of memorabilia, unless you're limiting it to Peter Parker Spider Man, than Miguel O'Hara or Miles Morales. Like, because Gwen is her universe's version of the person bit by that spider. Right. So if she would have been a man, she would have been Spider Man. You know, whereas Miles was bitten by a different spider and uh, Miguel also was a, a whole different situation altogether. But sure. they're still, they still count as Spider-Man. But because they're technically called Spider-Man. Right. And I wouldn't say Jessica Drew Spider-Woman counts, but I would say Spider-Gwen counts. I think that's a, <laughs> it's an interesting argument, but it's exactly the kind of nits I want to pick. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm sure you're like, just count it, please. Well, yeah. I mean, again, it was like my count was 4,222 items. Okay. Their count was 3,089. Look, I don't care. It's, it's That's a whole thousand. It's a thousand, people. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just fun. You know, it, it was something fun to do. Again, it was a lot of work. Uh, I didn't think that I would end up making it. Um, and I'd be more than happy to see whoever comes along and beats it next. I'd love to see their collection. Okay. Well, th that might be a shout out to the... You are, you are putting yourself in the crosshairs I, Just here. do it. You know, do the work. This is like the new like King of Kong. You know? <laughs> That's right. Well, hopefully I'm not compared to that guy. No, <laughs> no, certainly not. I didn't cheat. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I'm looking at it right now. So, you know, there's a lot of like really neat pieces in the collection. Um, some that are, uh, I, I think, we had talked before that I'd love for the our listeners to hear the story behind. Um, anything in particular that you want to highlight off the bat? You know, as like a, a like something in your collection that you think is really neat or has a lot of sentimental value? Yeah, absolutely. I think sort of the most interesting story to tell would be um, my page from Web of Spider-Man 126, which is my first Spider-Man comic. Um, I had for years, you know, I only own, well, only, I'm privileged to own four pieces of original art. Um, at the time, I'd only owned one. I own a, a piece of John Romita Jr. art from uh, Amazing Spider-Man 25, Volume 2. And I bought that as a high school graduation present to myself with the money that like my grandparents gave me. It's right um, up there. It's really cool. Looking. Yeah, thank you. I'm a yeah. big fan. And so since then, I had sort of decided, oh, how, what better piece to have than something from the first Spider-Man comic I've ever I ever read. So I kept looking, I kept looking and, and for you, it'd be like once a year, once every, like twice a year, I would just, you know, get on all the different original art websites and just surf. Um, 
and I could find Web of Spider-Man 120 through 125 or 127 through 130, but never 126. And it's, I mean, it's special to me, but I don't see why it would be special to the reader, you know, the, the right. average reader. Um, so I eventually emailed or, or Facebook messaged Steve Butler, because that's who I thought was the artist of the issue, because he did 120 through 125 and 127 through 130. And he wrote back really nice right away and was just like, no, that was one issue that we had a fill in artist come in for. Oh, okay. um, and, and I should have mentioned that I had started looking this particular time while watching the Ultimate Spider-Man Disney XD cartoon. Okay. Um, and that comes in in a moment. But eventually I... I you can admit you watched the show. I, yeah. Look, I liked it. Uh, I mean, I, I like them all for their own reasons. Yeah, you know, I mean, sure. I think anything Spider-Man is it's fun for Marvel me. It's the Marvel team up of Spider-Man cartoons. Right. And it's for me, it's, you know, look, I, I love I love Miles. I love Miguel. I love Spider-Gwen. I love them all. I But 616 Peter Parker, that's what I grew up on. I, I love it. But yeah. but I'll still watch all these cartoons because the heart is there. You know, I, sure. I don't think Tom Holland is... 616 Peter Parker, but he's my favorite cinematic Peter Parker. I think he embodies the the heart of the character um, in his portrayal. But I, so I, after hearing that from Steve Butler that he did not actually draw that issue, I Googled it. And I guess, you know, 20 years ago, I committed the wrong artist's name to memory and then just had no reason to double check it. You yeah. Know? And I found out it was a man named Roy Burdine, who I live in Southern California. He lives in Southern California. He worked at DreamWorks. I have friends who works who worked at DreamWorks, and I reached out to my friend Brendan, and he let me know that he had moved in across the hall from Roy and was trying to find a reason to talk to him. Wow. Um, at that point, I looked at Roy's IMDb and saw that he had actually directed the episode of Ultimate Spider-Man I had been watching. When I thought, oh, I should look up who wow. drew this. So you know. How does that happen? Uh, that, was, that is freaky. It, it sounds like a made-up story. Uh, I forgive you if you think it is, but um, thankfully, Brendan spoke to Roy, and Roy, uh, you know, was more than happy to meet me for lunch, and was very gracious, and and sort of told me all about his limited time working for Marvel Comics in the mid '90s, and uh, through sort of you know it's his story to tell, but most of the pieces of original art were destroyed, but he had two pages left from that issue, and he had brought him to work with him that day, and he sort of held them both out and said, do you want one? And I was wow. like, well, just how much? Just sight unseen. He had no sight idea unseen. who you were. He didn't know who I was. He just, a, a co-worker who he didn't even know was like, I have a friend who likes Spider-Man. Will you meet him? Wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so he, you know, he took the time, he, and he was very nice. You know, I, I did treat Tender Green, so, you know, yeah, I, right. I did my part, but uh, he gave me that piece. And so, you know, I, I went out into, uh, you know, I think I can count about five times that, tangentially Spider-Man has made me tear up at least five times, but I can think of five. And that was one where I went in my car and I was just like, this doesn't happen to people. Like, how does this happen? It was a very special moment. And I, you know, I I don't have a lasting relationship with Roy, Mm -hmm. um, but I'm very grateful to him for, for that gift. That's such a cool story. And it's a really cool piece of Spider-Man fighting Kane. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Really graphic. Yeah, I mean, you guys, if you're not watching, you don't understand. Like, I came in, I was offered a drink, it's in a Spider-Man glass. You know, it, it, your also, phone is in a Spider-Man case. I'll let you know that I, I don't let anybody else drink out of that glass. I, oh. That's a very special... Well, I'm yeah. very honored. You walk in the front gate, the thermometer outside <laughs> that's is right. a Spider-Man yeah. thermometer. Yeah. I mean, it is... Uh, now does that, is that part of your collection, officially? That was not, no. So, I mean, I, I set the record uh, in April of last year, and since then, a- again... Part of it is, is now that I have the record, I have like this, it's now it's a compulsion. Like it's like, now we need to buy more stuff. And you know, like when Rose is like, you you don't have it all? Like, isn't this everything? Like this seems like, aren't you satisfied? And I am immensely. Like if I don't get anything else outside of new issues, I'm fine. But it's just, I mean, as somebody who buys as well, like the hunt is the fun part. Like it is, I have to admit to you, like once I finished my amazing collection I mean, this speaks to maybe the compulsive nature of it, which is like I finished and it was like a good, great moment, but it was almost hollow Yeah, because it was like, now what now what? Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, for years I didn't buy any stuff from like, unless it was like a real novelty, like a number one or like an issue I really loved. And now I'm buying like dollar comics of all the other series. And I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. You know, but it's like, Oh, this is fun again. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, you know, I'm now into the point where I'm trying to get, you know, every appearance ever. So it's like you're 
that that's a step further than I think I'll ever go. Although that Miss Marvel issue is really nice. Um, that he's got a Miss Marvel number one here, which uh, if you don't know, is like very much oriented around. I mean, no, you do, but our <laughs> listeners, no, right? Is it's very much oriented around the world of Peter Parker and his supporting cast, somewhat inexplicably. Well, she uh, works at the Bugle, right? Right, yeah. or for. Women Magazine, maybe like a spinoff. Yeah, it's like the Now Magazine, or right? Look exactly, or right? It yeah, was that uh, and Peter, his book that he gets published, right? His photographs is that Webs, it. Webs, yeah, yeah. Which uh, I've thought I really want to get somebody to maybe that'll be my next commission is the book cover art, yeah, and then I can wrap one of my books. That sounds great. as if it's like I own a copy of Webs. That's great, and you just just. Take Polaroids of <laughs> right. pictures of Spider Man and That's put right. them in there. Yeah. Which, by the way. You know how there's the Pokemon Go game? Yes. Somebody had the idea, they told me, where it's like, it should be you're collecting photos of Spider-Man. Jameson Go or yeah. whatever? Like, yeah, like that should happen. <laughs> I, I don't know who to talk to about I'm that. I'm sure there's some crazy rights mix up right. that won't allow that to happen. Okay, so back to your collection. Yes. So you've got this great page of web of. Um, t- tell me a little bit more about another piece in your collection that you have like a fond memory of. You mentioned your number one, right. which your friends chipped in on. So what else we got? That's well, we think? have the uh, Marvel Team Up sixty seven uh, original artwork from John Byrne. Uh, that was a gift from my friend Greg, who passed away two years ago. Um, Greg was the owner of Galactic Greg's uh, comic book shop, Northwest Indiana's premier comic book shop, located at fourteen oh seven East Lincoln Way, uh, Valparaiso, Indiana. Um, they're celebrating their 30th anniversary oh, right wow. now. I mean, for any independently run comic store to have survived 30 years is unheard of, especially in uh, like a suburb of Chicago, basically. Like, yeah, you know, or, or um, during a global pandemic and during a, a pandemic, that, exactly. which we're not observing at the current moment. No, we're, we both got <laughs> tested, <laughs> you know, we both, both negative. Uh, and, and this is the closest I've been to anybody other than my partner in, in a long time. T- the, the, so. Between the glass and this, I've, I'm so honored. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, you should. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so Greg passed away. F- uh, I worked at Galactic Regs for about six years uh, through high school and then part of college. And he took on a, um, a role in my life that was more mentor uh, and friend, I guess like an uncle <laughs> without it being weird. You know, yeah. uh, we were very close. And um It was a a pretty profound loss when he passed away. Um, And he gave me that piece of art, which uh, the nice thing for me is it's not, it's, you know, it's John Byrne. So obviously there's some value there, you know, and it's Spider-Man fighting Craven from Marvel team up. There's value there. But for me, it's more, that's why I have it on my, on the doorway for when I walk out the door is it's the last thing I see when I'm leaving the house. Mm -hmm. Um, And it it very much reminds me of of, uh, one of my closest friends, you know, so I'm, I know a lot of people have suffered loss, and um, that's difficult. Uh, this was the most difficult one for me. So that piece has a lot of meaning for that. That's special. That's really special. Um, let's see. I'm gonna. I, there's something I want to ask you about. Yeah, like, please. Okay, you've got this great Leo Pardon statue. Yes. That is in Japanese. Yeah. Like, it, was this something that was commercially available in America? What is the story behind this? No, it's a Japanese import. It is a part of a Supaidaman uh, set, and it comes with the the Spider-Man standing in front of it. That comes with it as well. That's awesome. And then, like, I'll show you when we're done doing this, but it transforms into Leopardon, into the car. Wow. Um, and then it also has the car and a miniature Spider-Man with the set that's scale to Leopardon. So it's, a like, a, a pretty cool recreation of a 70s transforming Spider-Man toy. Also, I mean, I don't know if you're aware, but... Transformers or Power Rangers rather are very much based on that. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So that was just something that after I saw that episode of toys that made us, I was like, Oh, that's a cool toy. And then I saw the original one. Um, and it, it didn't have quite the same, like, I just really liked the presentation of that. What is an object that you have that you set your sight on for a long time that took a fair bit of wrangling to get into your possession that you haven't already already described? It's a really good question. I mean, any of the older... Oh, you know what? The Probably the issue of El Sorprendente Hombre Araña that I have, which is the La Prensa... I don't know if I pronounced that right. My wife says I speak Spanish like an Italian, so <laughs> hopefully that, that sounded okay. La Prensa. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, there was a... There's a sort of a... There was an imprint of 
or they were uh, they were reprinting Spider-Man comics from La Prensa Press in Mexico in the 70s and you know there's not a very clear oral history for how it all went down yeah i mean i only heard about this story that you're about to tell when it broke on like two the years twitter ago. like what not even 2 years ago i got i remember cuz i i talked to jerry conway about this the day that the news broke and that couldn't have been Maybe it was two years ago, but I don't, I don't think so. So anyway, uh, tell us more about it because oh, some people don't know the story. I mean, it's pretty interesting. Basically, from from what I understand, the sort of the audience really loved Gwen Stacy, and they were reprinting issues faster than Marvel was producing new issues, and so they went to Marvel and they asked for permission to create their own sort of fill-in issues, and basically it was a way to kind of keep Gwen Stacy alive for another couple of years while they sort of right, produce right. their own issues. So there was an artist, Jose Luis Duran, who like clearly really liked Gil Kane and really liked Ramita Sr. and sort of aped a lot. I mean, that Craven cover is straight off of Amazing 46. Like, yeah, he's doing a lot of kind of like tracing exactly. and things like that. But, but the interiors of the comic, you let me flip through it earlier. Yeah, completely like, original. It's completely original and it looks really great. I mean, yeah. is it Ramita level? I wouldn't. Say Ross so. Andrew, I would say. Yeah, I would say it's on the level of Ross Andrew. Yeah, who yeah. I, who, that's not a... <laughs> no, 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 but Ramita is an industry... Ex- he, yeah. There's a reason they used his stuff to commercialize all the Spider-Man right. in the 70s. There's a reason that, you know, I know Ross Andrews drew Superman versus Spider-Man, but, you know, Ramita Sr. redrew a lot of Peter Parker's faces for that. So right. anyway, so that's the new thing that I'm looking for, and that was something that um, I can't seem to find for a reasonable price. Like a... Sorry. Rick, sorry. Um, it's something I can't really find for a reasonable price. I thankfully this issue again was about I think like one fifty or something, and so I was able to add it to my collection. But any of the other issues I find are at best five hundred dollars, and I really can't justify it. I do have digital copies of all of them, so I'm trying oh, to learn. Wow. So I'm trying to learn Spanish, and so I'm using <laughs> using using those. And you can see um, the La Saga del Traje. So the, it's the alien saga in Spanish. Just say it in Spanish, yeah. in Italian. Yeah, yeah that's right, exactly. <laughs> um, I got that. Uh, Rosa, my wife, and I just went to uh, Guadalajara in January. I found those at a bookstore. But that's super neat. In, in terms of setting my sight on anything, I think it, it's really just the individual issues. Uh, again, that um, Alex Ross bust was very I, – I really wanted that in high school. That's why I ended up getting two jobs, working two jobs so I could afford to buy it. <laughs> Lots of sacrifice in this collection. That's right. Yeah. 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 Every job I've ever had, it's just a means to buy more comic books. So, so like what, what's coming next? Like you said, you're, you're reattempting this. Is that, is that something you can confirm? Um, I, I think I will reattempt it. I mean, even if somebody else, if somebody beats me, I'll do it. If I have more, um, it's just something fun to do. I I don't take it seriously. Do they, do they alert you if someone is challenging your record? I believe so, but I don't know for a fact. Okay. So right Um, now uncontested, uncontested as far as I know. Uh, Again, I I know, I I think there's somebody out there again, more power to you. I write like at at the very least, I'm hoping that I'll still be in the book this year. So at least I'll just buy the book and then that'll be, that'll be it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause again, it's a lot of work. It, It really is not an easy thing. Um, logistically just to like plan and then sort of like cultivate. Um, so you put this video out where you are kind of talking about your, your win and you have this great Spider-Man suit. On. Yeah. And by that, I don't mean like costume. I mean, it's like a full suit, like a formal suit, formal suit yeah. with webs on it. Right. Which is, I'm insanely jealous of, um, I'll have to like figure out where you got that tailored, but well, uh, it's, it's oppo suits. Okay. A-P-P-O suits.com. And they have a lot of other fun ones on there. Well, I'll, I'll only look at the Spider-Man. There one. you go. Unless yeah. it's like a black costume one. Well, they do have a like a panel suit. Like it's mm. like a spider. It's like a like a the interior of an issue. Oh, that's really interesting. Too. Yeah. See, see, I'm gonna have to do that so I don't copy you straight yeah. up. Feel free. But then in this video, you had this like big party. Yes. At the end. Now, was that something Guinness kind of helped you throw, or was that an independently independent run thing? Yeah. So I was in the middle of moving, um, and really just didn't want to deal with having sort of a count at my house. So I work in post-production. I have friends who, you know, work at like sort of boutique facilities. One of those facilities let me use their space for a weekend. So I moved everything in so that I could kind of put it up like a museum or, you know, and then I figured I'm having all of this stuff on display. I have all these friends who know me as the guy who collects Spider-Man. Why not open it up for anybody who wants to come? And so if I'm going to do that, though, 
I didn't want it to just be, oh, come look at my junk that I've collected for 30 right, years. Right. You know? So I ended up getting uh, some a comedian friend of mine, uh, Misha D, and he has a bunch of friends who all came in cosplay oh, and, that's did, fun. and did comedy. So Misha was a uh, Aunt May cosplayer. Uh, yeah. Or crossplay, rather. Crossplay. And he brought wheat cakes, you know, the recipe from Mark's book, which yeah. is also from an annual. So, Mark, another reason why the annuals count. There we go. We had to get um, it back on the record again. <laughs> just just got to get it out there. Um, so I, I just threw a party for, for friends and friends of friends. You know, anybody who – there are people I didn't know there. It was more like if you are respectful, come on in, you know, and costumes were encouraged. So I had a, about a dozen cosplayers show up and just sort of participate in the night. And it was just sort of a – you know, we had different rooms with a, a PlayStation in one. We had one with a Nintendo in it and just different areas people could go to kind of just check out the wide berth of Spider-Man media out there. I have to ask you, how much anxiety were you in opening up to people you didn't know walking through your collection? I mean, I would be like, don't touch that. You, you're like, be careful <laughs> well, over there with that thing. Yeah, well, I. <laughs> so what I did was I had a table at the front, sort of like Barnes & Noble, yeah. where it was all the free stuff people could take. So all yeah. the doubles that I, that I have that I give out to people um, with a sign that said, you know, free, please take one. I didn't have that much anxiety until the next day when somebody said they overheard somebody looking at an issue of like Amazing 300 and sort of, you know, because I just had all my long boxes in right. a row where you could literally flip through and look at every issue of every Spider-Man. That is brave of you. <laughs> and they were like, oh, I don't have this one. I'm going to take it. And then somebody else said, no, this is the collection. You can't take that. Oh, no. And I was like, I wish you didn't tell me that. So then I had to literally <laughs> go through and double check it. But nothing was gone. So that was good. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That would give me a lot of anxiety. Yeah, absolutely. Especially especially when it's like 2000 some and you're like, okay, now where did that, where's the crack? Right. You know, uh, well, there were cameras. We had cameras in the facility so okay, at least i could good. i could go that's back good. and review that's if i good. needed to well very cool well i i'm really having a lot of fun looking at your stuff and hearing these stories uh you know it's, it's an impressive collection but even more impressive is just like the joy with which you just talk about it so thank you so much for coming on the show well, thank you for having me i really appreciate it. it's been really nice getting to know you really nice being on the podcast i'm a big fan i'm a patreon Everybody listening should also be a Patreon. I got uh, my first two prints today, and they're beautiful. Um, I really can't thank you enough for those. Um, uh, yeah, any self-respecting Spidey fan should be uh, a Patreon subscriber. Well, that's that's really kind of you. <laughs> and uh, hey, you know, it's part of your collection now. You're getting that's right. prints. That's two more pieces. There we go. Two more. I'm yeah. contributing to the madness. That's right. And if um, I have another party, I'll definitely invite you and Mark. Oh, I would love to, and we'd love to have you back on in the future. Well, thank you so much.